thing that made him great could also run away like a wildfire and burn everything around him. What? You were at the actual I was fight? At the fight, yes. That was crazy. That was crazy. It was crazy. Why did you do it? Let's just start from the beginning. Yeah, let's start yeah, from the beginning. Let's just start from the fucking beginning. This is gonna be awesome, right? Tyson and Holyfield were once friendly. When did they become friends? And why has their relationship dissolved into an ugly series of charges and countercharges? What was it like to spar Mike Tyson back then? Well, Mike used to knock everybody out, but he had his own sparring partner that he knocked out every day. He had people come in there and he'd knock them out. You know, a lot of people kind of poke fun at him and stuff like that. Or see, it was just different. We ended up talking because there didn't many people talk to me as much either. At the trials for the 1984 Olympics, a shy 17-year-old Mike Tyson and a reserved Evander Holyfield were often ignored and ostracized by the more established amateur stars. Although competing in different weight classes, the two then friendly fighters once sparred against each other. I don't think we even finished around before the coach made us get out the ring. They came close to doing some things that maybe that was not uh, uh, kosher at the time, but as the time went on, they started swinging a little harder and a little harder too. They just, just told us to get out of the ring. It was a strictly comp a competitive type thing, trying to be the best you can that day. While many from those Olympic trials went on to have glorious professional careers, none could match the success of the two men they spurred. It would not be until nearly 10 years later that their paths would cross again. Only this time it would not be a sparring session. And of course he's going on to meet Evander Holyfield, isn't he, in uh, November. You've got two men who think that they're the best in the world and they want to prove it. Can you beat Tyson? Sure. I wouldn't fight him if I ain't ever beat him. I think he's a beautiful fighter. I just believe I'm better. Holyfield Tyson probably the toughest fight Tyson's going to have. There has been a rape incident report made and it's my understanding that Mr. Mike Tyson is uh, has been alleged to have committed the crime. Mike Tyson and his accuser had both testified in private before the grand jury, the way courts in America decide if there's enough evidence for a full trial. The former world heavyweight champion is said to have raped the 18-year-old beauty pageant contestant after July's Miss Black America contest in Indianapolis. He was asked to help promote the contest, and in the process, promoted introductions to some of the contestants. Number eight. One of them was Miss Black Rhode Island, 18-year-old Desiree Washington. The hotel in which the contestants for that pageant stayed was but a short walk, about a block and a half, from the hotel in which Mike Tyson was ensconced for the weekend. Police have been told that one of the contestants in the pageant, at the invitation of Tyson, made her way from her hotel to Tyson's hotel, where she was forced to have sexual intercourse with the former heavyweight champ. If convicted, Tyson faces up to 63 years in prison, which would presumably put an end to his hopes of regaining his title. I hope that it's not what everybody think it is. He's having trouble handling the outside. Inside that ring, he's a happy individual. Outside, he's got a big problem. The man worked hard all his life to make something of himself. I hate but a situation like that happens to anybody. You knew from the beginning that Mike Tyson wanted to have sex with you. No, That's I didn't. That's what was said. Mm -hmm. I know. Did he say anything to you that was sexual? No, not at all. He didn't. Just what? Would you like to go out on a date with me? I mean, I don't see anyone who can find something sexual about that. Your telephone rings. It's 1.30 in the morning, yeah. and it's Mike Tyson on the phone. Yes. Okay. What did he say? He said, can you come out? And I was shocked. I, I said, at this time and do what? And he said that he just wanted to talk to me. One of my roommates interrupted and said, well, there's all those after parties. And then what happened? I went down to the limo and the next thing I knew I was at the Canterbury Hotel. 
it just said, come on, and I didn't think anything of it, you know, and so many people judge me on that, first of all, why I went out at two o'clock in the morning, you know, and um, secondly, why I would go up to his hotel room, and I think even the most street smart person wouldn't have thought anything of it. Tyson's lawyers found three witnesses who said Washington kissed Tyson in the limo. But these witnesses came forward so late in the trial the judge refused to allow their testimony. For her part, Washington said she resisted Tyson's advances. She's a sick, money-hungry... She's really a bad person. Holyfield Tyson showdown is off. Mike Tyson, for whom little seems to be going right at the moment, has damaged his ribs in training. Let's just remind ourselves that Tyson is due in court in January on a rape charge. Former world champion Mike Tyson is now inmate Mike Tyson. There is no boxing allowed inside the Indiana prison system, so Tyson's physical activity will be limited to shooting baskets, lifting weights, and running. Looking back, you think Mike Tyson had a fair trial? Looking back, no, I think his representation is very poor. I, I don't think that he got the representation that he deserved. Everyone deserves that. Desiree Washington zeroed in on Mike Tyson from the start. Another beauty pageant contestant quoted you as saying, he's got a lot of money and he's dumb. You saw what Robin Givens got out of him. Desiree Washington may very well have committed perjury in order to cover up her true financial motivation. Had they known what they know now, you probably would not have been here. The former heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson has spent his last night in jail for a rape conviction three years ago. We believe now that it will only be his home for a few more moments perhaps uh, in the next half hour sometimes, perhaps as soon as uh, five or ten minutes away. With a chance to resume his multi-million dollar boxing career. monster have to in order to be a world champion in any type of combat sport you have to have that monster yeah a legit monster inside of you that doesn't really live in the real world because right. in the real world he doesn't work right in the real world if you can't put that monster away at times right you don't work in in, in life but that same monster if you can control that motherfucker oh. then you're mike tyson you're mike tyson Tyson laid waste to his victims as if he was Genghis Khan, Hannibal, and Attila the Hun rolled into one. It was just 15 months ago that Mike Tyson began his boxing comeback. And now, two titles and four bouts later, he will be meeting one of the most respected, most admired fighters of our era, Evander Holyfield. Evander told the world that he would beat Mike. Not just me, everybody in the room laughed. Tyson opened as a 25 to 1 favorite over Evander Holyfield. I ain't care what y'all say. The eyes don't fight. Well, one of the great things about Evander, he has a chin of stone. You can hit him with every with a sledgehammer. He's not going down that easy. Some have called it the ultimate clash of good versus evil. And whether the shoe fits or not, Mike Tyson is not afraid to wear it. I'm a rotten, mean, no good. Um, lascivious dog. <laughs> I thank the Lord for the opportunity. I also thank Mike Tyson and his whole camp for giving me that opportunity. Did you like hitting people? I like winning. And if that came to hitting people, knocking them out, yeah, well, I loved it. It's all about, all about the Lord, and uh, this is what I love doing. I'm a winner, and I was born to win. 
it is safe to say that Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield are not the closest of friends. I just lost to the best, better man that particular night. Um, I'm going to win the title for a third time, and um, I just, we had a bad night, but I'm the best fight in the world. I promise to do better next fight. Well, anyway, it's time now to present the Victor Award for the Comeback Boxer of the Year, Mystery Bander Holyfield! First of all, I'd like to give honor to God I, I thank the Lord for, uh, for strengthening me and giving me the confidence and giving me the courage to not give up. The deal is done, the date is set, Holyfield Tyson, the rematch will take place on May 3rd at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. What's at stake here for Tyson, aside from the obvious, the heavyweight title? I think the rest of his life is at stake. If he loses here, he loses that edge of being a great fighter or the possibility of joining the great heavyweights and becomes just another one of those heavyweights that didn't quite arrive at greatness. The first fight between these two men set a record pay-per-view audience of 1.6 million homes domestically. With the excitement generated by Holyfield's stunning win, officials tell CNNSI they expect the rematch to shatter that record. If he beats me this time, he beats me the best I've ever been. I well could have never beaten him if he beats me this time. Nobody seen more than I've seen. I don't need fighters, I don't need athletes. I'm the king of the barbarians. There's no one that could, this, that could surpass me in the pain I've endured. Uh, I truly believe that a lot of people out there felt that it could have been a flu, uh, but they get an opportunity to see it again. Uh, he has predicted he will win. Well, you know, he predicted that last time. <laughs> How did you feel about the guys you were in the ring with? Um, I wanted to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell! <laughs> why, why did... Uh, I'm laughing nervously. Um, why, you really felt that way? You yeah. To I'm willing to die for what I do. I'm not going to live and let somebody outwork me. As the third round was about to begin, Tyson came out without his mouthpiece. Oh my goodness, he's got a bloody right ear. Holyfield bit by a dirty Mike Tyson. That's a left hook. You know what's funny? Mike was having his best friend of again. He did it again. Bill Slade signaling that it's over. I think they've just about had enough. Tyson showing desperation in fighting Holyfield two times. Look out now. More fighting in the ring after the end of the fight. Tyson's trying to get at Holyfield again, I believe. Mike Tyson has apparently lost his reason, his rationale. He seems possessed right now. He couldn't beat him. He couldn't beat him. I've just been told that Evander Holyfield uh, just uh, went into an ambulance uh, on his way to a hospital. So Holyfield wins uh, uh, by disqualification in the third round. I was angry. What were you thinking at that time? Biting him back. And my, my, one of my corner guys named Tim Hallmark said, keep your mind on the Lord. That hurt so bad. And people tell me, how bad did it hurt? I said, did you see how high I jumped? Were you winning? Yeah. Was he winning? Yeah. Why did you do it? Because I'm crazy a little bit. And ask God what this is all about. He said, forgive him. You don't forgive nobody. You're going to be a mad person. You're going to find yourself locked up. How long did it take after the fight before you forgave him? I think after about 
by the time I I got into the locker room and everybody started complaining, man, I can't believe he did this, 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 this. I said, look, I said, did he bite you? They said, no, I, okay. I said, he bit me, right? And I said, now, I'm going to forgive it. You know what? Y'all got to forgive him, too. Wow. They said, what you mean, forgive it? I said, he ain't bite you. I said, he bit me. <laughs> I said, look, I'm going to forgive it. Wow. So yeah. you forgave him in the locker room right yeah. after the fight? Yes. We, we're the two very important people that everybody come to see. And they need to know that forgiveness is a, a big part of life. And so I was able to do that. Evander Holyfield has somehow forgiven him. Evander's amazing. Dude, he's the, I love Evander Holyfield. How good was he? He was the best, bro. How good was he? How, what a warrior. A week after that, we was at Madison Square Garden at an all-star game. And, and everybody was streaming. And I wonder what they were streaming about, telling me to watch out. I'm like, watch out for who? Looked up, Mike was over my head. And he, <laughs> he put his hand down there. And, you know, and I shook his hand, and I and I realized that hey, everything is good. Did you guys talk? Matter of fact, his his room was next door to mine, and I didn't know. <laughs> we come out at the same time. He asked me, "Is it all good?" I said, "Yeah." So we get on the elevator together, Whoa. and we come down with the door open. And everybody was shocked. <laughs> and so they were shocked, wondering why we wasn't fight. Right. And I, it was just you two in the elevator or yeah, other people yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah, that's just it. you two in the yeah, elevator. Yeah. And we thought they would be fight. And I told the guys, man, I said, you know how much money I got paid in that fight? How much money can you think we going to fight for free? <laughs> <laughs> what does a near taste like? It tastes like ass. It's hard. <laughs> Well, it, it was so bad, I took a second bite. Right. I was going to say, you must have liked that ass. <laughs> Vander is out promoting his hot sauce. Why you ain't bite me for the hot sauce? Why you ain't bite me for the hot sauce? So you surprised or what? Yeah, I'm shocked. We support each other. You know, I know if I come in, that would be moving more support. So anything I could do to help him, that's what I'm going to do.